Becky Holder, Camp Fire Me, moving into second place, day one here on the lunch break, and a beautiful test. Thank you. I'm so excited about him. Oh my gosh, I can't believe he held it together in there. He went in there and I said, you got some big shoes to fill, buddy, you know. Um, and I felt like he was just with me the whole way. Took a couple of pre-rides to get there this morning, but he's kind of had his game face on, so let's just hope that carries forward across country. Can't fire me a bit more exuberant than your old Mount, Com Mount Comet, but he's spending a little time in the field with Comet and yes, maybe getting some advice on how to shine in the dressage ring. Exactly, I guess Comet's been coaching him while they lie in their sand hole together. So, you know, um, good for him. I mean, what a good boy. Just thoughts on the course here at Rolex. You've ridden around so many times. You guys, as we mentioned um, a while ago, were cut a little bit short, very unfortunately, here last year. But you had a beautiful round regardless. And um, to the very end, you guys just looked like such a pair. And, and you have such an amazing connection with these horses, Becky. Tell those viewers at home kind of where he came from and, and how he got to where he is today a little bit. Um, he's a, an off-the-track thoroughbred from Louisiana. Um, I think he raced about seven starts and Aubrey Dunkerton who is Comet's main woman took care of him for years um, saw him as a three-year-old bought him off the track and I worked together with them all through uh, Aubrey's partnership while she was grooming for Comet and he ended up he was a scrawny little young horse and he actually grew up into kind of a you know he's he's a hunk of a guy and um, she's like five two and you know about weighs as much as a grain sack so so it was, um, he was just a little bit too big for her and I got to take over the ride and, you know, generous ownership from Phil and Melissa Town and my dear, dear husband, Tom Holder, um, allowed me to purchase him a couple years ago and kind of carry forward as a horse to sort of stay in the game. And he's just gotten better and better through training. Um, he doesn't have the most, the best natural paces and they've really come along and developed and he gets a little bit excited in atmosphere and so that's been a bit of a project. Project, but I couldn't be prouder of him than I am today. Well, he was certainly very, very stellar and cross country kind of one of your guys' definite strengths as a partnership. So the dressage is over. You did one heck of a test of 44, which will definitely keep you in the thick of things headed into Saturday's cross country. Have you had a chance to walk and how does Derek Korsh look to you? I did. I walked uh, yesterday and I have to say I was pretty impressed with it. Um, it looks big to me. And um, so some tough questions out there. I think he's done a great job of, of maybe softening the last minute of the course so that um, maybe a few more tired horses can make it home at the end of the course. But I, I think the, the middle of the course from um, the, the coffin on through the ditch and brush, which is every bit as impressive as the one at Burley, the Centaur's Leap, um, and then you have the opposite extreme in the canter gears uh, coming back and doing the sunken road. I think the sunken road's a quite a question and, and will kind of call on horses ability to really expand and use their scope over the ditch and then their their footwork over the top of the um, sunken road and so you know I, I mean we got our work cut out for us and I'm, I'm looking forward to getting out there and doing a little bit more walking so all I can right. come up with a plan. <laughs> all right well we wish you the best of luck you've definitely done a job well done here today in the dressage phase number 20 can't fire me and Becky Holder a fan favorite so there'll be lots cheering for you out there in the Gallup Plains. Thanks so much. Thank you.